So in spite of the slide you see in front of you, well, that's kind of a blind. This is intended as an interactive discussion where we are going to try to shake you down for questions about whether you can trust software built by volunteers, and then we or you will supply answers. If you're really completely fresh out of questions, we have a few in mind to uh, use to seed the clouds. But uh, it, it seems a little, we're hoping not to go there, especially because I see a couple of potential shills in the audience who might be able to help. So. <laughs> With no further ado, uh, would anybody put you, who would like to pose a question or, or a problem or a worry about using software built by volunteers, particularly at Apache? Please use the mic. What happens? Oh, what happens when uh, it breaks, and what, who do I go get help from? You can have the first one. <laughs> uh, when the software breaks. So it depends on the project, right? So we have multiple projects at Apache. I have no idea how many, but over 100 TLPs right now. So it depends on the community, but um, the, I assume you're asking about support, right? So if you are a company consuming these Apache projects, not products, um, and you use them for your own needs or in production and you find a defect at some point, you, the good part is that unlike commercial software, you got to that point probably without paying a lot of money, just paying time and attention, right? And at some point, you may decide to go for some commercial support or what we prefer, get involved in the community. If you know why the software is defective and you can provide the patch, thank you. And that's a path for you to become involved in the community, interact with people like uh, many here, and get it fixed. And then um, there's going to be a, a release at some point you know, coming up. And uh, maybe you're going to get involved in that as well. And you're going to use the next version, which is uh, patched. Um, if you are a company that requires support, and there are for, there's the another advantage that you can have many commercial companies providing support for you. So you have some options. So I'll add a little sauce. Uh, I mean, the, the first thing to know is that while the foundation is a collection of relatively independently run projects, it does, it does ask those projects to meet some minimum standards. And one of those standards is responsiveness to users. So if you're using Apache software and you need help, you can ask a question on the user list and you have a high likelihood of that you'll get some kind of an answer if you ask a, good, if you ask a plausible question. Or if you post a bug, you'll get some kind of an answer. As Hadrian says, on the other hand, you don't necessarily have a guarantee. So if a project really reaches the point at Apache where no one's answering the phone at all, the project gets wound up and put in the attic so that people know that they can't expect that kind of support from it. But by and large, Apache projects are healthy communities, and people who pose questions discover that in those communities they find lots of resources, often mostly their fellow users, as much as the developers or contributors, to help them with problems they have. Other questions? No, I want that support. Ah, all right. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> now, the, in, there are the individual projects, but then there is the ASF as a foundation, right? And one of the things it provides, uh, besides the legal umbrella and everything, is infrastructure for these projects. And part of it is the continuous integration system we have. So all projects, or most of the projects, I mean, all are welcome because that's available to everybody, do continuous integration. Uh, overnight the projects are built to ensure a level of quality. So the situations you're, uh, you, you mentioned, it's kind of hypothetical to me because that doesn't happen much at Apache, you know. Who's next? So actually, just to clarify, are we talking about software built by volunteers or software built by volunteers at Apache? I mean, there's a distinction there. Uh, uh, and so. <laughs> well, you know, Hadrian and I had a lengthy philosophical discussion yesterday. It wasn't to answer that question, but it actually turned out to include an answer to that question. So the discussion kind of went like this. People say, 
oh gosh, it's built by volunteers, can I possibly bet my company on it? Well, and the thought we had was think of all the other things that over history and in the modern world, people depend on that are provided by volunteers. Uh, giant swaths of modern infrastructure that are very important in the world, the Red Cross, for example, just to pull one out of a hat, um, not that the average software project is a disaster every day. Um, uh, sure, it has a certain number of professionals, but the, you know, a very large part of what it does is a result of volunteer effort. So volunteer software can be seen in the larger sort of picture of human volunteerism. And lots of times in the world, we go out there and we very cheerfully bet our happiness, well-being, and livelihood to some extent or another on something coming from a volunteer. Doing that with software is just an example of that. And so that's my answer to the question of, you know, w w how do you answer this question in the really broad sense? Now, of course, aside from that giant piece of philosophical bloviating, I can't tell you much about using software built by volunteers that are not at Apache, because the whole idea of this talk is to be able to talk about how the particular way we do things at Apache engenders deserved trust. Um, so this will go back a little bit to that, the talk yesterday about the security response team thing uh, as far as end of life and software and things like that. So give me an example from my perspective as a user. We'll use um, SDKs that come from other companies. Some of that stuff uses very old software. An example being Axis 1.4. I think it was released back in 2006. Okay. Not really supported by the community. I understand that. It's so freaking old. I don't know why people are still using it. But they are for whatever reason. Okay. Last year, vulnerability gets, um, and but the, actually, I should say one thing. Access One Four st is still available from download from the regular download site. Vulnerability gets uh, announced against Access One Four and some a variety of other things. Man in the middle kind of attack. No fix ever comes, and this really isn't so much y'all or even volunteer software. It's just how it gets used by a broader community and how vulnerabilities and end of life and all that kind of mix together, where supportability becomes an issue. So. I'm going to expand this question a little bit before giving my part of the answer, and then we'll see what, what Hadrian wants to correct. Uh, so, so security is one of the most important and one of the most difficult ways in which the, so, the Apache projects and I suppose the volunteer software universe in general copes with its users, because it has this little paradox. Uh, you'd like to keep the existence of a security vulnerability, or at least some people like to keep the existence of a software vulnerability, a secret until there's a fix for it, but we operate as op an open development environment where everybody can see what's going on, everybody's eyeballs are, and that's in part where some of the security comes from. So what happens when there's a security problem? Well, to start from the normal case, in a normal up and running project, the foundation has an infrastructure for discreetly reporting security problems, uh, encouraging projects to attend to them promptly, and turn those around as releases as rapidly as possible for people to use. Now, what we were talking about yesterday, which led to the question is, well, what happens when there's a piece of software that's been built by the foundation which no longer has a community prepared to stand up and deal with the situation, particularly a security situation? Now, I was learning something yesterday when the answer to that question was, well, that is a pretty good indication that that piece of software ought to be retired, that the foundation, it shouldn't be sitting there for a trivial download. It should be, it should go through the process that the foundation goes through to say, this is retired software. It's available to you if you want to go bring down the source and play with it, but don't expect a community behind it. So leaving aside the question of whether Access 1.4 is sitting out there as if it wasn't retired, even though it might perhaps ought to be, uh, that still leaves a real practical problem in the world, which is the question that was asked, which is what happens when some third party has incorporated this antique and it's out there? Well, you know, you're not, th th I guess the honest thing to say is it's one of these few moments when I feel like Richard Stallman has a point, okay? So, Richard would say that if the whole ecosystem was entirely open source all the time, then that proprietary product which incorporated access for wouldn't exist. Um, you'd be using an entirely open source universe and if some piece of it had become, you know, had a problem, you would at least have a flying chance of replacing it with something better. Of course, I wouldn't personally want to have to address a security problem all by myself by replacing Access 4 with a more modern technology and a large code base. So th the bottom line here is the answer to every possible question here is not, oh, everything is unicorns and ponies, all right? You know, this is a hard one. If 
Uh, software gets old, sometimes the community of volunteers wanders away, sometimes there's no one to maintain it, and if somebody has irresponsibly incorporated it and isn't keeping up with the technology, you can have a problem, it's true. You want me to correct that? If you have any, if, okay. if, you, if you don't like something. So, I agree with everything, obviously, but there is the other side of the coin to me, right? So we are volunteers, which to me kind of means we're quite pragmatic. And many of us don't spend the time here if there wasn't a need, right? So <clears throat> it's very likely that these projects built by volunteers, especially the ones at Apache, are widely used, are in production. So there are a lot of people like you who have the same problem, and these kind of problems are going to be addressed quickly, right? It's, you know, placing some bets here. Now, if you are in a situation like Axis 1.4, okay, that's fine, but then are there many in that situation or not? If the answer is not, then probably there is a reason why many people migrated from that piece of software that was successful some time ago and now it's not any longer. However, what's the alternative? If you use commercial software, there are odds that that software, and if you use old commercial software equally old, it's very unlikely that you're gonna be able to do anything about that. And because that's not volunteer run, but profit run, I would say that you, it's a fair bet that nothing is gonna be done about that. So your odds are slightly better. So even if life is not perfect, I think it's slightly better than the alternative. Anybody else? Or maybe we have to start working on our, using our, uh, our, our fill technology here. So uh, a show of hands, how many of you are here thinking from a primarily, I'm a developer thinking of incorporating software perspective as opposed to a more sort of business-like perspective? Okay, hmm, I'm gonna run out of categories here pretty soon. Uh, so how many of you are here more thinking from a sort of management business perspective of, okay, what's gonna happen to my company if we pull open source software into what we're doing? All right, we have a couple. You know, there are an awful lot of hands that didn't go up either way. Would any of you like to volunteer to sort of a general area of concern that would uh, give us something to work from? Defending open source uh, uh, to uh, the corpor uh, uh, corporate types that uh, may not understand it as well. That's the, that's the primary reason I'm here, is actually to acquire rhetorical skill at, uh, at selling the people that uh, might need to be persuaded. So. There are a couple of topic areas that come up in the, oh gosh, can, we, can the company possibly tolerate all the risks of using open source? Now, I have a funny feeling that this got done in three other talks here at this show already, but what the heck. So the, one's legal, and I've been warned not to get bogged down in this because you can get bogged down indefinitely. Now, in the keynote just now, somebody said, you know, I went to the lawyers and the lawyers said on the particular subject of the GPL, be very, very afraid. Well, I'll tell you all a secret. If you ask any lawyer any question, their answer is going to be, be very, very afraid. Because that's how they get to build the next five hours from you, is by, is by first elaborating in glorious detail what you should be very, very afraid of and then trying to help you find a solution to it. So, if you're looking at the legalities of using software from the Apache Software Foundation, there are a few things to know. First of all, the license has been used and extensively and beaten on by an unimaginably large volume of corporate lawyers who have tasted it and found it good, um, unlike what you might find if you are <laughs> in <No. laughs> Some of you may recognize the poem I'm quoting, I don't know. And, uh, and so your legal risks, you know, there's a, there's a good deal of reason to believe that whatever a particular lawyer you're talking to today might say to you, your legal risks in terms of the straight out, what happens if we use this license are honestly really very low. Now you might also worry about things like, well, what if some crumb of proprietary information from some other place has crept into the foundation source control system somehow and now we have some liability? Well, you know, so the, that's a bad news, good news situation. The bad news is you might get a call from, you might in a remote and unimaginable circumstance get a call, get a nasty letter from someone telling you to stop using it. As far as I know, it's never happened, okay? Now, to understand, understand why, you have to understand how Apache projects work. 
there's a source control system, a limited group of people have permission to put things in that source control system. All those people have signed agreements that, that say that anything they put in the agreement to the best of their knowledge is theirs to give and, they're, and they are granting the Apache license to it, which the foundation in turn in, in it grants to you. One of the biggest responsibilities that we try to teach Apache PMCs about is that their job is to make sure that the things that go into the source control repository are in fact IP, which is clearly what it says that it is. You know, the, the, the actual work of the people who are volunteering it or, is come in, or comes in through a more bureaucratic process the foundation has called the software grant agreement process, whereby the, the foundation can adopt larger bodies of code while keeping IP provenance clear. So you can say to your lawyers, Here's the Apache Software Foundation. They have this whole IP provenance structure. It's all out there where we can all see it. We can see, all the, the, we can see the records of where the code came from. We can see where it was committed. It's clean. So you know, that's my jug act on the legal aspect of the risks of open source. Now, another common sort of corporate concern about open source already came up as a question. Is it going to break? Who's going to take care of us? Now, you know, the first answer you have to someone who says that is, and when was the last time you got a bug fixed by Microsoft? Um, unless, of course, you're a corporate behemoth. Now, I mean, the interesting thing about this, and part of the abstract Muhammad wrote, who was originally planning to be here, was that this talk was sort of designed to kind of address companies that are not gigantic companies, that have giant platoons of lawyers to cope with everything. And from a small company standpoint, you're really much better off interacting with Apache than you are interacting with commercial software vendor X, because you because you've got an important resource, very likely, smart people who can engage with the community. At this point, I think I should stop talking, give Hadrian a chance, and let him talk a little bit again about sort of community engagement as a way of getting what you need out of projects. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, why is your question related more to social aspects, legal aspects? I All of the above. Uh, Before you answer, I'll give you some time to think. It looks like you need it. Uh, there, there is a curveball somebody threw at me a few days ago, and I don't know the, the answer. Apparently, there was a situation at some company, it's not a big company, it's not a software company, it's a, soft, a company that uses software, where they had to choose between open source or big corporate technology. And the push for the uh, commercial software was that it's more expensive. It, it wasn't really as clear as that. And apparently the reason is that managers want big budgets, uh, big teams, in order to advance in their careers. <laughs> OK? I, I didn't think about it before. I have no idea. But, but if they do something lean and mean, they are fast to market, and you know they have a group of smart people, they, that's not what managers want. That's what startups want, right? And <laughs> I'm not sure how you solve these kind of these kind of issues. That's why I asked. What exactly is what you're addressing? What is more of a philosophical question? Well, uh, uh, honestly, I, what I was trying to do originally was answer Benson's question about why are you here. Uh, and the the, uh, the question that actually comes up more. Uh, 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 for me, is actually selling uh, uh, management on sponsoring open source development, uh, 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 which is not quite the same question that this this uh, 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 this uh, uh, meeting is supposed to address. But I don't know that it's a, even though I couldn't quite lure Hadrian into, into telling me uh, telling you all what he told me yesterday about this. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of quoting him a bit in terms of the relevance of this talk to that question. So. To understand what I'm on about, you have to look at the reality of what does it take to get support from an Apache project, which was really our first question, okay? So let's be honest. If you show up on the user list and blop out an email message demanding all kinds of assistance with some cockamamie use case that you're trying to come up with for some piece of Apache software, the, bit, you know, the realities of the situation are you're likely to get a fairly chilly response, okay? Uh, what you get out of an Apache project, like many community things in the world, is, is very proportional to what you put into it. So if you want, I know, if you walk up to an open, when you walk up to an open source, well, 
actually, let me back up a second. If you walk up to HTTPD and you're just running a website, chances are it works great, okay? It's gonna do, it's, been, it's a very mature piece of software and if you have a problem, you're probably just having a little you know, difficulty interpreting the documentation or figuring out how to apply it to your particular solution and you'll ask a question and someone might even answer it for you. But if you're using any of these things that we're cheerfully building out on the bleeding edge where they're built by scratching one inch at a time and are not a very mature solution to a very well-defined problem, there's a pretty good chance that if your company sets out to use a piece of Apache software, it will take you about a month and a half before you run into something which does not do what you want. And it won't necessarily be a defect, you know, a gross bug where you can say, look, the documentation says this and it does that. It will just be a use case that the people who've worked on it so far have not found itchy enough to scratch. And you know how you're going to get that to do, you, and the good news is you can get it to do exactly what you want. The bad news is you can get it to do exactly what you want by having one of your people show up, join the community, and contribute exactly what you want. And you know, you can't do that with proprietary software. So, so instead of saying, gosh, it might not do what we want, the question is, given the inevitability that no software ever does what you want, where is the better cost profile to get it to do what you want? I, I would in addition to that, when you, uh, uh, when you have someone who's, uh, say, a committer or on the PMC, uh, and the software breaks, uh, you're going to have a lot of people who uh, are already part of the community you're working with uh, at your disposal. If, so if there's a question of, if there's a bug, uh, yeah, you can really count on Apache software. If you've got somebody in your company who's uh, empowered to, uh, as a PMC member or to committer to fix it right there. Uh, and then, uh, then there's also the question of the long uh, uh, livelihood of the, uh, uh, how long is the project gonna last? Uh, uh, I guess the alter, uh, uh, I might ask that uh, uh, and say, uh, uh, but compare that also to commercial uh, options. Well, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add one little bit of sauce to this conversation I think then Hadrian wants to turn, which is I, I'm gonna speak from personal experience. I'm going to say, what am I in particular doing here, okay? My company does not, is not an open source software company. Basis Technology, who, for which I happen to be the CTO, we use a bunch of open source, and some of us contribute in the community here, but we're not an open source business model. What am I doing here spending three days, okay? Well, the reason is that it became clear to me very early on that the best, that, that for every hour or so I put into an Apache project that was relevant to our business, that was providing a piece of infrastructure technology we're using, if I played my cards right, I could get about six back in terms of useful value coming back my way. And I think, you know, that of course is a metric pulled straight out of my ear. But um, that's the general principle here is that the best sales pitch I know of to make to the management about why should you put people to work contributing is that it's a leveraging factor. Joining the community has a multiplier effect. You, by and large, if, you're a, if you make an honest contribution to the co community, you'll get more back than you put in. Yeah, yesterday you used the term uh, amplify the value you're getting back. Oh, so then, then there was this longevity question. Do you want to talk to that? Yeah, I mean, for as long as there is a need, as I said, we're quite pragmatic people. If there is no need, we're gonna focus our attention towards something else. And one of the things that communities do, they try to attract new developers who started to use the technology probably because they use it in production, they have some need and they continue the project, they maintain it and, you know, people move on, but that's how life is. Um, you were starting to, <coughs> sorry, you were starting to share your experiences. So I thought uh, uh, maybe I'd join in and maybe someone else does too. Um, one of the main reasons that uh, one of the companies that uh, I currently consult for use open source is uh, quite contrary to what you were talking before, because it's cheap, because it doesn't cost anything. Um, simply because uh, we can use it without paying huge licensing fees. Um, but the other thing, and that is, that is personally my main um, reason why I use uh, open source, why I've been using it, is because I can um, look at the code. And, <laughs> and fix it or learn from it? If necessary, maybe even fix it. But yeah, look at if something is broken. I I I 
inevitably have to look at the code to be able to fix it. Otherwise, I mean, that's, that's the only technique that I've learned so far. Maybe someone has something smarter. <laughs> Which brings a point that ben Benjamin mentioned before, the documentation, right? So people look at the documentation, they look at the code. Hey, this thing is doing something different. So this is a, a tough problem to solve because people want, the people here, most of them like to write software and not write documentation. And um, <clears throat> we're looking for volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a bit of a shield, okay? Um, volunteers are a fickle bunch, you know? As, as Benson said, they, uh, uh, they tend to uh, scratch their own itch, okay? So as long as the technology and the code is interesting them, they'll, they'll work on it, and then they'll walk off and do something else. Um, whereas with paid people, whether they like it or not, they like getting paid a lot. So they'll keep on working on something for longer and longer. So how do you address people who say that I can't depend on software for volunteers because there's no continuity with any, any code or projects which are um, you know, built and made by volunteers? Um, on a slightly different topic, I told Benson yesterday that last year <clears throat> I went with uh, Habitat for Humanity and we built some houses. And I'm not a lawyer, we talked about, I'm not a carpenter either, right? And uh, <clears throat> you mentioned scratching a niche, right? So whatever niche I had to start building houses for other people. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we did that, we do, did some community work. And it's kind of similar in the way that I wasn't there full time for the whole duration of the house. People before us came and put the foundation, we put the, the frame, was, you know, hammering both of nails and stuff like that. And um, I think it's quite similar. You do stuff for a reason, but if you have a large pool of people with a various set of skills, with a various sets of interests, I think that project is much more likely to survive, be of a higher quality, than a project that's run by I'm not comfortable going into that, you know, some manager uh, being more successful in the power struggle in the corporate politics at some point in time. Well, the other thing I think we should say is that the foundation has some ways of doing its business which are intended specifically to address the problem of short attention spans. So an Apache project is very careful. We do, openness is great for a lot of reasons. Openness means you know what's going on. Openness means you can read the code. Openness means there's a giant email archive of everything that of, of importance or of, a bar, you know, of, every, of every decision that was ever made in the project. So that as time passes and people wander in and out, the new people have a lot of resources for coming to grips with the technology and carrying it along. Now, does this work perfectly? No. Okay, the other thing to keep in mind here is that the word volunteer at Apache is a kind of central paradox of the organization, at least in my peculiar mode, okay? Yes, we're all here acting as volunteers. If some of you saw my incubator talk the first day, we are wearing our Apache volunteer hats. Who paid for that hat? Okay, in many cases, we're being paid by our employers to wear that hat, okay? So we act as volunteers. We put our corporate affiliations aside in terms of acting for the public good and producing the software, but somebody likes this stuff enough to pay us to do it. And so that, of course, improve, that, that, put, that casts a certain amount of, actually what that really does is it muddies the comparison between volunteer and non-volunteer software. If you buy software for a commercial company, yep, those people are being paid to do it. A salary is nice. On the other hand, they may not be liking their job so much this week. There might be a power struggle and they may all get assigned to work on the next big thing and then you're high and dry on your bug fix. If you use software from Apache, yup, all the air molecules in the volunteer room might run to the wrong side this week and leave you high and dry. Uh, but it doesn't really happen very often. Now, the other thing I would give you is a piece of advice, which is while I'm here speaking on behalf sort of of Apache and, raw and cheerleading Apache, I would tell people to use the same common sense in evaluating the use of Apache software that I'd use in telling them to evaluate anything else. Before you bet your company on Apache X, then I would strongly recommend that you spend a couple of weeks watching the mailing lists of Apache X and looking back in time a little bit and getting a feel for what's going on in there. 
you will rapidly in the open community get a sense of whether this is a viable hopping place, which looks like it's got legs and is going someplace, or whether there are crickets chirping in the night, okay? You know, the reality is some of our projects are kind of have those days, and you might not want to bet your company on one of them. Quick question for this round. How many here are um, paid, and how many are really just volunteers? Who's volunteer? <clears throat> Exclusively volunteer. Well, yeah, I raised my hand twice because <laughs> I'm paid for some projects and I volunteer on others. And usually volunteering ends up with you being paid, right? Like it's one of these that you Either way. Sometimes you're paid first to be a vo reluctant volunteer, yes. <laughs> so I'm kind of on both sides of the camp. I'm a reluctant volunteer, I got paid first. But our company's also open source, so you know we have all the business dynamics of one of the things that's good for us is that we can sell our software for less and you know, get places where we couldn't otherwise. Um, and in fact, this question, not exactly worded this way, came up last night on the Flex list. Somebody was like, well, how can I you know, bet my company on Flex now that it's not part of Adobe anymore? And I actually piped up and said, well, if it's you know, been donated to Apache, probably a good chance it's going to live longer than <laughs> if it had stayed at Adobe because as long as there's a need, it's going to be there. And, uh, and so if you're part of the need, then, you know, it's kind of a self-perpetuating thing, you know. And if you need it, you're going to, and you have actually a chance of continuing to make it happen. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. It's, it's a very relevant question. And, and I'm also a PMC member on Pivot, so I'm on the other side of the camp too. Uh, people have asked me the same question, you know, can I bet my company on Pivot? And you know, I have to tell them, well, you know, I'm here for, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm using it, I'm contributing. Right. And so. Um, there is another aspect. So we talked about being paid and being volunteer and Benson uh, mentioned that the line is blurred sometimes, it's muddy. Um, <coughs> Part of the, th the thing I do, and I think many do, is also try to influence the thought in our own companies about the future of technology, about what the trends are. So I think the volunteering part also benefits the company who's paying for the head. So I'm not really sure exactly, even if there is a pattern for this dynamic. So to me, it's quite interesting, the whole open, uh, social aspect of open source and what it leads to, it really changed my life. I'm really not sure how to explain it more, but it's not, I don't think it, there is a one answer to all these questions. Hmm. Well, we have a little time left. Anything else you uh, remember from our preparation that you think we haven't covered? I think we've pretty much talked about most of the subjects that we anticipated here. I guess, yeah. There, there is one more um, thing that I thought about this, this morning. Um, it's not only the cost of, the lower cost of going with open source. And it's a bit of a tricky subject as well, like, and it's legal related. Um, what makes technology valuable is also standards, right? And I was mentioned to, mentioning to Benson that, you know, we replace tires to our cars. We don't really care. We buy whatever generic brand. We don't really care about the brand of the tires sometimes. Some people drive cars and they do care about the brand of the tires. But. So, and that's only possible because of standards. And 
it's also the mindset we have here at the Apache and some other volunteer-run projects to provide standards-based, as much as possible, technology. And for us, standards is a focus. I know it's a focus for many companies, but for the big ones who are trying to lead the market, sometimes the interest is quite the opposite, to provide some vendor lock-in. And here, we, uh, we, want, we like it or not, we have to collaborate together many people from many organizations or not to provide as standards-based as possible, uh, possible technology, which is, a, I think, a huge value for our users. So while we're adding one last, so I had one last thought about things you can tell the management about why open source volunteering is a good thing. It gets people, it gets the children out of the house. Um, actually, that's not quite the metaphor I meant. It, it, but it gets, it gets your developers from fresh air. Um, development organizations have a tendency to become somewhat insular. They have a particular way of doing things. They have particular tools they use. And the longer you're there, and especially if you're successful at retaining your people, the more that kind of wraps itself into a kind of all-encompassing worldview that isn't always easily penetrated by new thinking. And yeah, you can send people off to, convent to, you know, to I don't know, uh, meetings like this and hope that something leaks in in between the beers, but sticking pe pushing people out of the nest a little bit to operate in an open source project they learn some new things. They learn some new things about getting along with people in a collaborative way. They can learn some new technologies. They can learn some new methods. That all comes back in and brings interesting thought and new techniques back into your company that might not get there if you just stayed inside of the compound. All right, I think we're close enough to done to declare done. 